energy of back. Club cheered. X300 RT. Yo. What's that on your chin? Uh, I don't know. I didn't shave. Oh, it's your other chin. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting myself off the camera. We're starting the finals. The top right is beyond the bottom left is cure. All right, this is going to be sick, guys. We're on Ancient Cistern. This is going to be a best of five. Hope that you guys are enjoying. A big thanks to Mapu, of course, for doing all of our observing here today. What? Clever Starcraft Gar cheered. X300, thanks for pre recorded stream RT. But guys in the chat already spoiled Q1. Guys in the chat are nasty <laughs> for spoiling pre-recorded streams. You're so ridiculous. Fuck you guys. You're so ridiculous, man. <laughs> Every week he does this. I wish you had done it earlier with Hero, because that's normally who you say. Uh, anyways, anyways, here we are, guys. Uh, we are in the finals. Kira is doing a proxy racks, as you see, and going into a double gas here. Um... Yeah, and please, please follow the channel. Follow uh, Mapu. Use the command Mapu and all that. Much appreciated, everybody. And uh, yeah, let's see. Let's see what Kira's build is going to be here. He's obviously opening up very aggressively. Is the factory going to be at home? It's kind of interesting. That it's a one barracks proxy opening. Not as, <laughs> not as much. I love this. While we watch it build, he's giving us a whole fucking story in here. This is great. Uh, so he's going for Tech Lab. Now, that's obviously for Marauder uh, and Concussive Shells. Where's his factory going to be? It's going to be... Oh, he built Second Depot in the main. I guess he's going to build the factory here. Is that right? Is he going to? I don't know, man. He's going to start it in a second here, though. <coughs> it makes more sense to make it out at your main base because if you make it near there and the Reaper comes and finds it and kills the SCV, you're basically screwed. But anyways... One proxy racks Marauder Concussive Shell Rush while going factory at home. Now, the Reaper defense here is going to literally just be the Marauders attacking. So, we'll see how this goes down. <coughs> Excuse me. Command center. Okay, here he comes. Here he comes. Now, this is very annoying for Kier. But he's walking with the Marauders right now because of this. Beyond obviously so good with the Reaper. Like, maybe he keeps this around in the base and just harasses while he tries to defend. Now, already a cancel on that command center as he needs to. This is very, very tough. Okay, he gets a Hellion out. Oh, dude, look at that. Look at that, beautiful. Uh, Beyond's Reaper gets out, but he does have a couple kills. Has to get rid of this building here. That was super, super annoying. The eBay actually got killed, so no cancel there, uh, unfortunately. And he just runs by the bunker, loses one of his Marauders in the meantime. And look at this. Look at the base beyond. He just throws a command center down. There's two Marauders in his base attacking his shit. And he's like, command center, let's go. He knows that this is already held. He has no fear. Now, there's another Marauder coming up. But yeah, his, his Reaper comes home to help out. It's healed up as well. Nice pullback. Look at that pullback, dude. Sick micro from Byun. Now, the Cyclone's coming out. Um, Does he keep the aggression going? Like, you could see him float the barracks for vision if he's going to go Cyclone and try to send across the map. Or he could just sit back defensively. I think the defensive play might make more sense. But we'll see. He is bringing that forward now. And, okay, he's picking off, like, a couple SCVs. Like, I guess, like, these units don't scale super well, so, like, losing them is not necessarily the end of the world. And it, I guess that could save you from building a depot for a bit longer, too. Sometimes it's good to trade so you your supply fixes itself. There's actually builds that do that. Where you're like, well, I know that these three Marines are going to die, so then I don't need a depot right now, right? Like, that's an important thing to know about. Anyways, he floats the, the uh, racks into the main base. Uh, Kier's starting a, an additional barracks at home. Obviously, he's going to need it since this one's going to burn down. 
Uh, he doesn't get, like, that much intel. Like, I guess he sees, okay, we have a starport creating, you know, we have a couple cyclones, the command center's done. Nothing, nothing too big there. Maybe worth, though. All right, command center, uh, finishing up here for Kier. Kier is up three workers, okay. His army quite a bit lower. And this is where Bion is really gonna kind of put it to put it to Kier. Kier lost some extra units there, right? So now this very aggressive stance that Bion is taking, he's moving forward with his alien and two cyclones, and he's got a, a a tank and I believe four marines in that medevac. But I could be wrong. There could be a reaper in there. I don't actually remember if he retained any of those reapers or not. Oh shit! That's a good move. Well, that sucks for Beyond, doesn't it? Oh, man. Well, when that happens, you're just like, why am I so dumb and bad? <laughs> you know, I'm sure everyone has had that moment where they're like, this is a cool attack. And then, like, it just gets completely fucking mangled in a half second. And you're like, well, yeah, I guess so. Okay, so right now, to me, it looks like Cure is very likely going into mech. Uh, obviously he's going Banshees here. He made the second racks, I think, just to open up the tech path of building factories because he lost his barracks across the map. And look at that, Hyperflight Rotors coming up after the cloak upgrade. So yeah, this is this is going to be mech almost 100%. Uh, yeah. So over on the other side, uh, Bion's side here, he's got a couple Cyclones kind of ready for some harassment. Looks all pretty normal. Nothing, nothing too out of the ordinary here. And looks like he's going to just go land this over here to get Stim, adding more barracks now as well. Uh, he does have that third command center coming up. And there's the factories. So yeah, this is absolutely going to be uh, mech going forward here for Kier. I like it. I like this. I always am a fan of seeing mech. And I think especially for TVT, like, actually, Biotank is really fun against Biotank, but I think Mapu, mech adds a lot. Observing donated $3 okay. And 33 cents. What is it? Mapu is the greatest observer of our generation. Okay. There isn't anything he hasn't seen. Yeah. He even observed me when my toenails exploded off my body and flew straight into Tony Rigoli's Gabagool flavor Danes. Okay, dude. <laughs> That's, uh... I don't even know what the fuck that word means. <laughs> Uh, anyways, back to this double armory coming up. What? <clears throat> yes, indeed. Thank you, my man. <laughs> uh, okay, so the double cyclone harassment. Not sure he's going to get much done with that, but if you're not going mech, those cyclones are not going to uh, scale really well at all. They can be used scuffles mid-game, and then they get really bad late-game, right? Like Marines and Sea Chinks will both plow them down very quickly when supplies get high. So I think it's all right for him to kind of sit those in the side in a medevac, maybe see if he can get some value out of them. Obviously, it's one less medevac with his army. But again, that's not the end of the world either. A little bit of roaming for Kier here with his triple uh, cyclone. And, yeah, just kind of a moment of sitting here. Wait, did he cancel Hyperflight Rotors? I guess he did. Oh, that's sad. I really enjoy uh, Speed Banshees. Now... Yeah, not, not too much action at the exact moment. Uh, it does come in with those speed... Or not speed banshees, regular banshees. Obviously, they can't get away without a speed upgrade cure. Uh, but I like the amount of air control that Bion is exerting right now. Uh, this is an important thing to think about. When you're playing mech against a uh, bio tank, right? So first off, the first thing that happens to the marine tank is it turns into marine marauder tank. Uh, and you don't necessarily have to do the tanks. You can do a more sloppy version that's less tank heavy. Uh, but then you have to decide, do I want heavy tanks or do I want to skip everything into Sky Terran? Because you need to do one or the other. Because as long as uh, your opponent, the mech player, 
is not straight dying. Uh, what's up? X three hundred. Hold on, I'm gonna. I like the fake. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead. I'll play that at the end. I wanna, I wanna talk about this right now. But thank you very much. We will play that uh, after the, this game, in between the games. But um, I'm pausing donos for just a moment, guys. Now, uh, the, the, what I was trying to talk about here, right, is as as the supplies get higher, the mech player scales so heavily that the bio will do very little. Like you have to find him unsiege or find a location to hit that nothing is there. Or like you're way outnumbering. So basically the scaling of the bio doesn't work right. So you have to decide what to do. Do you skip up into Sky Terran or do you go even heavier siege tank and make it very hard for your opponent to break anywhere? Uh, either way, if you try to make it really hard for him to break anywhere, it becomes a Sky Terran battle anyways. So sometimes we do see people skip over everything and go into Sky Terran immediately. And we see a little flavor of that from Bion, but not completely yet, right? Like, he's focused heavily on those Vikings. Uh, he's got some Ravens in there as well, and he is controlling the air due to that. But we'll probably, as Cure kind of defends everything, see Bion have to get into something like uh, Liberators with this as well. Now, here we go. He disables a good amount of these Siege Tanks. Sieges up himself. And we do have a little attack from Byun over here on that fourth base as well. Uh, looks like the air dominance does start to go towards Cure a bit. You can see Byun still has more supply. It's just a slight SCV lead, which doesn't really matter. 73 against 79. You're not ever going to win or lose a game because of that. And, oh, look at this actually from Cure. He lands on the siege tanks and tries to kill off the medevacs that are trying to drop to save the siege tanks. Kind of a cute moment, but loses a lot of Vikings there. Uh, anyways, it, the supply differential is being cleaned up pretty quickly at this point. And some turrets going to go down. Tank's going to siege up. Feels to me like Cure is completely safe, right? And his siege tank count is going to be pretty dominating. 2-2 two, two for his mech is going to finish up. We don't even have plus one uh, on Byun's mech at this point. We just see a couple tech labs. What are those on, actually? I did not I did not see what, what buildings he had just made. I imagine since it's beyond, it's going to be barracks, and he's just going to go crazy with the bio, but we'll see. Yeah, yeah. With the uh, Vikings, don't forget they get that plus, like, 20 to mechanical. So they actually, they do really well on the ground against probes, SCVs, siege tanks stalkers even it's like they're they're pretty high damage output on the ground anyways uh right now cure i think has done a good job look at this you walk into his little circles right his sensor towers and he scans it Ooh, yeah moving forward a little bit too much backs up dominating air right now sieges some of his tanks and beyond just has to run back yeah, and, like, Bion is really focusing on heavy Marauder production right now. See, he's trying to get in. This is what I'm talking about, the scaling. Even though the Marauders, on paper, look like they can do well against Siege Shanks, and they can in lower numbers, like lower numbers of Siege Shanks against middling numbers of Marauders, like, eventually you get enough Siege Shanks that it doesn't even matter how many Marauders are there. You'd be, like, max on Marauders, but if your opponent has 20 Siege Shanks, you're done. Uh, anyways, he is tanking here with some Hellbats as well. Uh, those are biological, right? So they don't take that additional damage. And... Well, I mean, he's just killing off a of Byun base right now, man. The mech of Cure doing a fantastic job. I think Byun, he committed too heavily on the barracks units. Like, you need more siege tanks or you need to control that air. And he was controlling air at the beginning and then just went super heavy into bio, which this is probably the least popular way to do it. Like, this is how, like, for instance, MMA used to play against MVP's mech, and maybe that worked back in Wings of Liberty. But honestly, it's not that you see mech very often to really show this that much, but it really doesn't work as well as it used to. You know, as players get better, stuff like that is a little bit harder to make work sometimes. Now, here he goes. He brings in everything. GG is called Cure Massacres. And there you have it. Cure wins game one. Here, let me play that now. Clevis Tarcraft Gar cheered. X300, honestly, I like the fake Arty, but he is too nice, too calm and, and too fake. We want the real Arty, the nasty one. When can we have the real Arty back? Uh, in two more wins for Kier. What? 
Dump Defense donated $3.33. RT Erdom Corrupt Mods did one gamma for the whole finals instead of one for each game. Down with Corrupt Lazy Mods. Not only did they not defend RPTR04 from Twitch admins they didn't defend RPTR05 and he's now banned too. Maximum Corruption. Mods, mods, mods. What am I paying you guys for? Alright guys, we're going to get into game number two. Beyond versus Cure. Cure winning 1-0 to zero right now. Loading that game as slowly as can be. <laughs> what is this emote you guys are using right now? Mods. It's an ape beating the ground with a stick. That's great. I thought that was a Protoss fucking one right there. Imagine a mod that plays Protoss. <laughs> So, Bion is going to go for some sort of forward racks. Maybe it's just going to be hidden to the side. That's been sent a little bit later, so wouldn't be surprised if it's just like at the third or something. And, yeah, going up right across the map. First racks actually gets made. And the second SCV that's going up to hide, I guess it's going to be a second racks, right? There's no other reason it would have gone out that early. So he goes second rack. So I think what we're going to see here... Oh, this is kind of a, an interesting take by Bion. I believe that we will be seeing uh, two racks Reaper, but one of them's in his main. So that'll make Kira think it's one racks Reaper, right? Into factory, I guess, because there's going to be double gas if he gets up there. Um, Very different, very different. But you might be able to tr trick Cure into making the wrong amount of units here. Which is, you know, that's a big part of StarCraft sometimes. Comes up. This looks normal. Goes in. One gas. Doesn't check the second gas. Now, there is a possibility that he clicked on the gas to check how much gas was in it. You can do that in StarCraft 2, not in StarCraft 1. Um, and then he could have known it's second gas, but I somehow doubt that he did that. Yeah, I, I don't know why you wouldn't check for the second gas. I feel like I feel like you probably should. I mean, the thing is, you can guess that there's a second gas in multiple ways. Again, you could click on it and be like, there's not enough gas. This doesn't make sense. Or uh, you could also say that the first gas should always be on the left-hand side because it's harder to scout. But, you know, that would be a very artosis thing to do where I'm like, look, he won because he's stupid and he doesn't even know about these small things that give you edges. Um... Now, these two Reapers are actually doing sick. Look at this. He's going to kill Bion's, or Cure's Reaper as well. Bion is doing a great job with this right now. Look at that. Very good grenades. Lots of lost mining time. Force is a cancel. Are you fucking kidding me? Really? Really? First off, that was drawing damage, right? So you're, like, keeping the Reapers away so you can get out your second Hellion. Cure's done. It's, well, this is what I talk about. Cure is a great player sometimes, and then he has games that are so bad that you're like, what the fuck are you even doing? Anyways. Ah, <sighs> 1 1. Tied up 1 to 1. Oh, 
I think we got a remake. Almost started, almost. Dude, all I can think about is those burgers my wife made for dinner. They're so good. I can't wait till tomorrow. I'm gonna have one for breakfast. Alright, let's go into the second game, guys. What did I put in the burger? Well, my wife made it. It had jalapenos, like pickled ones, with uh, some nice cheese, like like uh, sharp cheddar or something, and mustard. Oh, God, it was so good. It was the best burger I've ever had in my whole life, literally. All right, top left, we have Cure. Bottom right, we have Bjorn. You're like, that's not a burger, that's a milk. Get out of here. Now, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's the beginning of the game. They're making depots. Who cares? We'll just chill. <clears throat> yeah, mustard is the, uh, mustard is, like, one of the goat condiments. It's so, mustard is so fucking delicious. Like, I don't put ketchup on anything, but I'll put mustard on anything. No, my wife is not sitting next to me. I swear to God, this is the best burger I ever had. Sriracha is only good on eggs, and if you think it's good on other shit, like what are what are you even talking about? Sriracha is literally only for eggs, guys. Literally only for eggs, and maybe fa. Great on fries. Get out of here. You don't even. You don't. Don't even get out of here. Degenerate ranch, ape. Yeah, fuck ranch, man. I don't do any ranch on anything. <laughs> I look like I've eaten nothing but something like green my whole life. Yeah, that's fair, dude. That's fair. I get you. <laughs> you know, every event I uh, go to with Roddy, man, he loves mayo for his fries. Mayo is good on fries. It is. It's a very good condiment for french fries. Yeah. It's legit. Yeah, Dutch people do love mayo. That's for sure. Ooh, that SCV just barely makes it. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Command center in the main base for Bjorn. Goes into the factory. Gonna uh, play defensively here, making a marine to join his reaper. Uh, the factory going up first here for Kier. And then gotta go ahead and throw his command center down at the natural. So he'll uh, actually be mining from his command center before Beyond, despite starting it a little bit later. Most likely. Because normally you make uh, the uh, orbital first and then and then float it. Clever Starcraft Gar cheered. Yo. X300 RT, I had my date today. Yes. I shared my interests in life. I okay. tried to be a gentleman, tried to okay. make her laugh, yeah. and followed your advices. Okay. But after we got out of the McDonald's, she called a creepy 35 years old video game nerd. Do you think she is faking not being interested in me? She doesn't answer my calls anymore. Uh. Yeah, I know. You're, you're doing fine, man. Don't worry about it. But you got to play hard to get now. Don't call her again. Wait for her to call you. It's a war of endurance. All right, so a little jump up here from Cure. And doesn't go all that well, I guess. His Hellion on the low ground did help a little bit. Cure trying to apply some more pressure. And his uh, natural gas made immediately here. Orbital done and floating over. And a little bit of, uh, you know, containment. I guess you could call it here from Cure. Oh, that actually goes very, very well for Cure. Better than I thought it would. Gets rid of four Marines. Luna actually doesn't get that last $3. one. The other night, my date asked me what I do for fun. 
I said I go on this online chat yeah. channel where a guy is streaming himself playing a 22 year old video game, and try to strategically bet on imaginary internet points. I also post long paragraph memes in. You know, I don't know who would be such a loser to play a 22 year old video game. I mean, a few years ago I did, but I was younger back then. This is a 25 year old game. StarCraft 1. Now, uh, let's take a look. Where are we at? Stim on the way here for Byun. We have the Raven coming up for Cure. Nothing too much. I mean, we had those early game scuffles. Those are pretty common. It's like a little bit of a 2-1-1-ish looking build coming out of Byun here, which is like one of his main builds, you guys might recall when he won the World Championship in 2016, the 2 one one was like his main build overall. <laughs> Just overall, especially against Zerg, but like it's usable in all the matchups. Uh, it's funny because I did ask him about this in Katowice because we casters were kind of laughing about how Bion does like the same strats over and over. And like just, he just, he, he's all tactics. He's all micro and tactics. He's not strategy. And I will literally put my life on the line. If there's some omniscient being, some god of the universe, I'll let him decide at the end. He can send me to hell if I'm wrong about Bjorn on this regard. Anyways, I asked Bjorn at Katowice when I was doing an interview with him. Malak 200. Hold on, we'll play that after. Uh, and Bjorn just said, no, I think people are wrong. I do lots of different strats. And it's like, oh, well, how do I counter that? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just so, uh, it's funny. Anyways, uh, Enjoy Byun's play. I mean, anyone that's just purely micro and tactics, I think, is a, a fun player to watch. Now, here he goes, bombing into the main base. Kira is halfway across the map with most of his units. Oh, Jesus. Is Pig going to lag us out again? It's Enki! 3 ASD. God damn it, Enki. All right, we'll play that now, Malak. Malak 224 donated $3. Mario was slathering a large lump of mayonnaise over Luigi's body. Yes, sir. Spread it over like you're the fries, brother. Mario squirted another white... Oh, dude. The fuck? And there we go, back into the game. And look at that double drop, man. Like, seriously, 12 workers killed. That's pretty insane. Now, in the meantime, this third command center very likely to be canceled. Look at this. He flies over everything to the natural, based Bion over here. Now, can Bion actually hold on? It looks like he's uh, giving up his natural, at least for now. Uh, you want to keep this command center alive. Obviously, the eBays are not actually upgrading yet. Ooh, does pick off that siege tank, but there's enough units here to clear him. Trying to get as much done as he can. Uh, and at the end of the day, gets 24 SCVs compared to 7. That's kind of insane. But the contain is still up over here. There's still potential for Cure to get more damage, in fact. Oh my god, disables both the tanks. Oh, gets the auto turrets down. Now, the auto turrets actually... I guess it zoned the Marines out somewhat? Okay, gets both the tanks. That's huge. So now everything at the ramp and everything down the ramp can be killed. Oh, the SCB's being pulled. Hold on here. Look at this. Pull some Marines back. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I mean, that's a hell of a lot of damage, isn't it? GG is called and Cure able to take that one. Very fast and furious. Cure now leading two to one. And uh, that is, well, that's not over. It's a... Uh, First to three wins, so this is a best of five. Yeah, this is a ZVZ. They just both chain knurled uh, an SCV for a really long time to build a command center and switch to Terran units.
They're neutral SCVs on the map now. So that people don't have to sit through ZVZ anymore. You can just go neural and get any race you want. Alright guys, we are going to go ahead to uh, game number four. StarCraft is it possible to extend the StarCraft 2 engine to have 50 players map in Archon mode, etc.? I don't think so, dude. When I've seen eight man free for alls, the fucking game lags like crazy. It doesn't work well with that many players. All right, let's do it. In a game four, I'm gonna go to Babylon. Yun versus Cure. Cure leads two to one. And we have Byun in the bottom right. We have Cure in the top left. All right, here's the God's honest truth. I have to pee so badly. I'm going to just let this sit, and you're going to have no commentary for a moment. I will be right back. Hi, I'm back. All right. Let's let's see. Where are we at in this game now? Okay, so we got Beyond bottom right. We got Cure top left. Looks like Command Center is going up. SCVs within one. Army within three. Looks like no damage has been dealt yet. Okay, pretty standard. Hey, I didn't miss anything. I'm going to go to the bathroom more often. Apple has a <laughs> Mapo is uh, impossible to to uh, stop him from saying whatever he likes. Okay, little uh, drop going across the map here for Bion. Don't forget, Bion does have to win here. I 
Has a Reaper in here as well. Wow, yeah. Can't even come close to doing anything against that. Chases him all the way home. I guess that's good. <laughs> and third command center, of course, coming up for cure. So that's kind of the big difference we see in this game right now. Doesn't actually pull that far enough forward. you got to split it slightly more so your cyclone isn't taking that type of damage. So one mine for one reaper so far. All right, so third command center getting started here for Byun, and well, we're just kind of waiting for any sort of uh, action to start up here. Looks like going to go over, switch off uh, for the reactors. I think here he'll probably go Vikings for a moment. I think it's time to build up here. Yeah, there it is. The Air Force getting built up on both sides, uh, creating those Vikings now. Extra barracks being added on for Cure. Doesn't look like we're going to be getting any more mech games in this series. Beyond, of course, someone who never goes mech. Ever, ever, ever. Mech players will always go bio sometimes, but there are bio players that will never go mech. It's kind of an interesting thing. Pretty mirrored, really, when you take a look at this, right? Like, they are within a couple supply in every single thing. Their command centers are reasonably close as far as timing goes. The little bits of roaming that we see on the map really not doing much for either side as well. Yeah, TVT in StarCraft 2 is very good. This is actually, this particular game is just, like, a little bit slow. And I did miss the openings, but, um... All right, a cool little attack here. Locks onto the tank, so... I mean, honestly, losing some of these units to kill a tank and whatever else you get is really quality. Uh, none of those units scale at all. So these are types of units that you actually want to lose off. Uh, the Cyclone isn't going to do much for you long term. The Hellion and the Reapers even less. So to kill three SCVs, make him draw back and kill a tank, that's an amazing trade right there for Kier. He has to be very happy with that. He's traded out his lower quality units for a little bit of an economic lead as well as a siege tank. And of course, again, buying time on that map. Now, uh, okay, 1-1 one, one is coming up uh, for Beyond's side. We don't, I haven't seen Ebay's yet. Okay, no, he does have an Ebay or two. Yeah, he does get them started. Okay, a little bit later. I guess I missed those going down. That was a little bit confusing. You definitely need to get that going. TVTs, like, very oftentimes go long. Not super long like StarCraft 1 TVTs, but, like, you definitely need to get your upgrades going. It's a very easy way to lose is your opponent getting ahead on Marine upgrades. All right, Medivac switch here for Cure. Bion's still on Viking mode, so it looks like Bion will probably have the air advantage. We'll see the exact numbers when they do decide to start actually engaging. Uh, but that means that Kier probably wants to try to put on some harassment, right? And honestly, if you look at the minimap, like look at Bion's base in the bottom. Uh, he doesn't have any buildings on the left side of the map. He doesn't have a sensor tower. Uh, there is a possibility of getting a drop in there to do some damage. But as I say that, he actually sends out two SCVs. I see him building what I believe is a depot. Uh, and probably another depot now, just to watch the fringes. All right, and here's that double medevac that we were just talking about, how it might go along this side. He lifts up, and there is the depot. Look, he flies right around the sensor tower, right over that building depot, so really well-timed from Bion, but I don't know if he saw it. He's actually attacking right now, so I think he's actually maybe missed this, which means Kira's double drop is very likely to do massive damage. Yeah, see this? Nothing up here, nothing ready. So, yeah, Byun in a little bit of trouble because he was putting on an attack at the same time. That's too bad because he literally went to put those depots there to catch things like this. And now the SCV damage is gigantic. 15 SCVs going down. Jumps upon this siege tank as well and has to back out. Uh, Cure does end up holding, but that is a pretty 
All right, Bion does end up holding, but that is a pretty big advantage there for Kier. Of course, if he wins this game, he wins the tournament. Bion, though, very good at comebacks in TVT, honestly. He's the type of player, like, the way he plays, he's, uh... He's someone that can bring something back like this. Now, one thing to mention, his 2-2 is well started. We don't have that yet over on Kira's side. Instead, second factory getting plus one for his siege tanks as well. Now moving out onto the map. He certainly has a better army right now. It's very siege tank centric. So not something you can really engage. Wow, 24 SCVs killed to one. Oof. Now, that probably like that's probably what Byun would want to see is that it's like okay well you do have more siege tanks but he wants to have the bigger bio force he wants to be able to be very like mobile with that for instance now turns around stops the bio from catching his tanks forces the siege turns back around himself that's a great armor shred right there that's a fantastic armor shred okay armor shreds here as well but there's one tank on the high ground Byun doesn't care oh sick disable right there sick sick disable look at this his vikings now trying to hold he has to land him but this is what i'm talking about Byun with more marines right now trying to make this comeback a reality getting up into cures natural just absolutely ridiculous they're all at like one health and he is still going getting up here picking off tons of units look at this the air units all coming up to fight as well he needs to get him off his barracks but Byun gets insanity damage insanity damage puts himself right back into the game by being more mobile here than cure damn Byun. damn okay so Cure is now moving out once again. The siege tank count for Byun, I'm assuming, is extremely low, like three, four tanks. So, oh, he actually has two of them in his medivacs. What is this? What's he doing? What is this attack? This doesn't look good at all. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, that that wasn't that wasn't too good. Uh Kira was super, super ready for that. The siege tank in the main base was really the nail in the coffin there. If that wasn't there, he could have made something happen. Uh, instead, his army supply is now down 30. You know, each medevac generally represents about 10 supply. Not always, but like eight Marines and a medevac, right? That's 10. Obviously, Siege Shanks is going to be a little bit less. Uh, like eight, whatever. Anyways, uh, here we go. Byun trying to engage here. And he actually disables double tank. I think they did get one volley off there. He's actually doing remarkably well considering. And the Vikings land to keep the tanks alive. But then Byun's tanks get those volleys off onto the vikings as well and suddenly the supply is really close again it's crazy man it's crazy beyond games are insane okay picks up a medevac of marines he's going to send that up and around the map there is a depot covering the area that the sensor tower does not leading into cures base so just want to throw that out there he's obviously see how he's going around the circle I feel like when I watch Terrans drop around these circles, it's like one of those movies where you're trying to slingshot around the fucking sun to get enough speed to get home in time in your spaceship or whatever. You know, that fucking... <laughs> everyone's seen that that trite idea of this is how we travel through space is slingshots only. Uh, but yeah, he, he gets spotted by the depot and Kira going to be able to block that. That plus three attack and three armor is coming, whereas two two is going to be finished after that. So that's kind of insane for Bion. A little bit of harassment from Bion inside, dude. This is crazy. Seriously, Bion was in such a bad spot and just forces his way in with just pure mobility and aggression. Look at this. Does another little drop in the main base. This one not super great, but actually, like, I mean, he does a little bit. And some of the units get out of position. So he's actually dropping on top of these tanks, too. Look at this. He's going to pick off two of them. Do we keep going? And we do. GG. Bringing us to game five. Damn, dude. <laughs> Beyond is crazy. Beyond is crazy. <laughs> he's such a fun player to watch. He really is. Hope you guys are enjoying. Thank you for coming by to the StarCraft 2 stream. Well, the two, StarCraft 2 cast. Um, 
And... What else? Uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll play Brood War after this. This is the last game, then we're going to go jump on some Brood War. Some B-dubs. Officially a StarCraft 2 stream, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, a guy in the chat, I completely disagree with the way Beyond plays. That doesn't mean I can't enjoy watching it. Right? I completely disagree. I think his Terran versus Terran is inferior to, like, just about all the other Korean Terrans. But I like to watch it. I like to cast it. I don't think it's the way you should play. <laughs> but I'm I'm glad that there are people like Byun who will play like that. All right, let's go. Game five. And here we go. Dragon Scale is going to decide it in the bottom right. We have Byun. Top left, we have Cure. All right, guys. Who wins? Who wins here? Type 1 if you think Beyond wins. Type 2 if you think Kira wins. Who is it going to be? Wow, people betting on Pyun. Look at that. Wow, guys, I mean, three are hilarious. <laughs> They're so funny. L O L. All right, you guys think Pyun's going to win? Yeah, well, you guys are dumb. I think Kira's going to win. Uh, okay. Yeah, guys, hit the command, Mapu. <laughs> and you can follow Mapu on everything, doing a great job of observing for us each week here. Uh, I hope that you guys like uh, like catching a little bit of StarCraft II cast during the week. I feel really good casting a bit of StarCraft II. Kind of jonesing to play some Brood War right now, but I guess we'll do that in a few minutes. Give the add on the reactor very quickly here for Beyond, including a full wall. Goes ahead, throws the factory down. I believe that's out of vision for the SCV. Yep, can't see that, so well placed. Can't really tell exactly what's going on. Uh, there is a Reaper coming out, so I'm sure Kira will want to go scout with that quickly. Terran StarCraft 2 is subscribe goal. I don't play Terran in StarCraft 2. I actually don't really like Terran that much in StarCraft 2. I like to watch it, but I don't like to play it. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the Hellion. I'm not a fan of the Marauder. Now, of course, there's Arctosis cast uploads every day, guy in the chat. Now, the Reaper getting up and, yeah, doing a little bit here. Yeah, two SCVs, not bad. The Double Reaper, of course, going to be able to chase him out. Oh my god. I just saw that guy. Well, thank you for letting me know, but it's a little bit late. <laughs> Apparently the Artosis cast... One of the videos broke. I see what went wrong. It'll be up tomorrow. Sorry about that. I actually had it all done. But something happened during the upload, I guess. Anyways, it'll be back tomorrow. Uh, yeah, that's, that's messed up. So, uh... What do we have going on here? The Reactored Reapers for Beyond. So, yeah, with the Medivac plus the Hellions plus the Reactored Reapers, certainly we're going to see Beyond try to put on a little bit of aggression. We have not yet seen uh, him make the Command Center. It looks like he's getting ready to. Yeah, we've seen a few attacks like this lately where it's like you might drop the Hellions off uh, and jump up with the Reapers, or it's a possibility you see, like, the uh, Reapers jump up uh, or be dropped off with the Medivac. And then go into the natural with the uh, with the Hellions. Here it looks like everything is going to be the first thing I said there, where you jump up with the Reapers and drop out the Hellions. 
It's a pretty powerful attack. Six Reaper, four Hellion. Definitely beats seven Marine, two Hellion. Definitely, definitely. So here we go. This is a big deal. Yeah, Beyond going for it. Dude, that's a lot of damage so far. Look at the SCVs come. The SCVs can't really fight because of the three Hellions. The three Hellions will start to destroy them. Now, here comes the Cyclone, but good micro there from Beyond picking up the targeted unit. Oh my god, dude. The amount of damage is insane. What in the hell? Auto turret comes down and he just gets out of there. One Hellion into the natural. But 24 probes killed? That's crazy. And more at the natural as well. Oh my god. Looks like continued attack here, but Beyond continues to push forward. Dude, I think Beyond has it. I think guys in the chat were accidentally right. They only beat me in this bet because they are dumb. <laughs> but look, <laughs> Bion uh, executing this drop very, very well. Look at the resources lost. Holy crap. What a difference there. Now, Bion's still rallying up more units. He has his own natural expansion up. He's up 17 workers, which is just crazy. Uh, Bion's starting to add on all sorts of units right now. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you would imagine that he's just going to win pretty easily from here, right? I like he doesn't have auto-target on for the, uh, not mag field, but, you know, the lock-on. Look at this. A Banshee over at the natural, and he's just going to target SCVs. I was talking about this earlier tonight, that when you kill a bunch of SCVs early, it's worth it to sacrifice stuff to kill more. Because, it like, every SCV that Kira loses right now is backbreaking. He just really needs his SCV count to get back up. Not even mining any minerals in his main base. Dropping every mule he has. Imagine how good a cloaked banshee would have been here. Jeez. Dude, don't be stupid. I don't run ad breaks. Okay, Twitch does. So, <laughs> like, go subscribe to the channel if you're upset about it, bro. That'll stop the ad breaks from occurring. Anyways... Uh, we have a raven going across the map. And, I mean, it, God, man, even auto turrets right now are going to do really well. Auto turret killing one to two SCVs. Super sick right now. Hmm. Triple Raven. Okay, I like this approach. I like this approach, okay? Triple Raven, and he's going for a fourth Raven. And he, so he's basically on Raven Siege Tank. Bion knows that he's kind of screwed the longer this game goes. But he's going to go across the map with every unit he has, I think, and try to disable and auto turret his way to a victory. It's a smart move. Like, honestly, I can't think of any way that he could win this game, but that's a reasonable attempt is to say, okay, I've got these very powerful early game Ravens, a decent amount of Marines, a couple Siege Tanks. If you disable every tank, you can blast through everything. If you get on top of your opponent's barracks, you can win that game. You can win that game. What's it going to do? Hurt your economy? Your economy's already screwed. <laughs> it's like overall, like there's more high value units here for Cure. And Cure just GG's. The drop coming in is going to deal too much. And that does it. Beyond going to be our champion this week.